Cybos breadcrumb time. But let, let, let's just start by clearing some of that off because it, it is a complex subject and there's a lot of myths around it. Um, I mean, and first of all, let's get rid of. Okay, so Tom Pop from Swift, Den Norsebank, Nat West, and like eight group. Be, we're talking about blockchain or distributed ledger technology to be to be or DLT. Should we just say, try and say DLT? It's um, it's difficult for us Brits because it's the name of a famous disc jockey. The, um, <laughs> or the, and a lot of a lot of the original conversations around ledger got tied up with the, with the idea of the, the cryptocurrency and the you know, the anti centralization movement. We, have we moved on from there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do think that what well, you see that bankers start to see the difference. That's, that's, that's for sure. And for sure it has polluted the, the, the DLT um, uh, discussion at large. Uh, it's fair to say that it started with Bitcoin and what they have brought is a whole set of techniques mm -hmm. to do more distributed approach of things, to, to use cryptography to, to prove and to make sure that uh, things are, are undeniable. Uh, when they happen on mm. a blockchain. So it's a multitude of technologies, but it is not about Bitcoin. Right. And it is not, I mean, yeah, you use Bitcoin. And okay, I got to say, I am already impressed. It is not about Bitcoin. This is just like with Christine Lagarde. And she said, but we're not talking about Bitcoin or Ethereum here. Right? Let's listen to that again. Uh, when they happen on mm. a blockchain. So it's a multitude of technologies, but it is not about Bitcoin. Right. And it is not, I mean, yeah, you use Bitcoin and blockchain, but if you want to use DLT mm. without Bitcoin, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> but I think there is still a, a bit of a mis, uh, misunderstanding in the market. I, I go to a number of conferences around the world mm. and often you have an expert on so-called so-called expert I would say on blockchain and the only topic of conversations are cryptocurrencies yeah. Yeah. so you're right it's very much uh, our task to mm. demystify it and almost decouple mm. in a way distributed ledger technology and its cryptographic fantastic cryptographic properties from just a crypto talk which scares a lot of yes. people yeah that um, that interesting word used in there is decentralization yeah. And, and that's that's one of the elements of the, that, that world that seems to be left over, um, which takes people into another myth, which is of disintermediation, because um, you know we live in a very regulated world uh, where there are lots and lots of central banks and stuff. And you, know, you say to a central banker, "We're going to decentralise everything," it's, it's, it doesn't sound good for the career. Um, but there are aspects that you know, we're seeing, particularly uh, at least early on, we saw in the capital markets trading world where that, that was looking like a particularly good idea. Is it still a useful part or should we? I think it is. But I think, again, understanding the evolution, because when we're starting talking about Bitcoin, it's just the first generation of blockchain. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's way past there. Yeah. Way, way past there. It's, it's very clunky. <clears throat> it's not uh, performance ready. It's not enterprise level. Mm -hmm. But even without uh, that finality of a central bank, they did follow certain rules of monetary policies mm -hmm. to make sure they control the, the actual number of Bitcoin that mm -hmm. is uh, absolutely available for the exchange. It's a very much finite number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so they did not necessarily totally violate the, the yeah. ways you should operate a currency. And I think when we look at anything in terms of settlement uh, methods between the banks, you absolutely would need finality mm. of a central bank, of a central institution. Mm. And, and that's, that's the reality. It doesn't matter whether it's a, a central bank or it's any other reputable institution. Whilst you're looking at a decentralized model, when there is no single point of failure yeah. with ma many players, you do have to have finality of something mm. if you're talking about settlement of, of payments. Absolutely. And I think you see the challenges when you don't consider that fully, uh, with the recent attempt by Facebook and launching Libra. Mm. So, I, I think that, that, Libra might come up. It, it, that's not perhaps not so early. But it's not a bad idea. The ideas are not bad in themselves. Mm. But I think um, if we're not careful, if we're not considering the finality of a, mm. a central institution, I'm not saying that it's centralized model, it's still decentralized because that's what DLT mm. is in nature, you are risking of building another L bubble. And mm. no one wants that. Yeah. 
So otherwise, you start creating assets mm. okay. that the value becomes very speculative value rather than linked to the real world. Mm. Okay. And again, uh, we are still in infancy. Mm. Yeah. So when we talk about use cases, whether they are proof of concepts or real use cases, mm. we tend to migrate our existing portfolios mm. onto those new platforms to begin with. Mm. But we still have to have considerations about the legal frameworks uh, to make it happen mm. properly. Uh, but I think it's, it's definitely moving in the right direction. And also focusing on interoperability between various types of, of mm. DLT is, is interesting. But we di didn't talk yet about consensus. Oh, wow. Because that's interesting <coughs> about the trust, isn't it? It's, it's understanding the consensus mechanism on yeah. the network because they do operate different consensus yes. models depending on those very rigid first generation like Bitcoin. Uh, up to very, very advanced enterprise levels, like, mm. for example, Corda, uh, yeah. R3. And they, and they all have very exotic names as well. As oh, well. God, they Bison do, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they, well. they, they, they do, they do. Just, just, just and that, I think that was one of the, re I mean, that was one of the s first signs of infancy of, of, of Bitcoin, is that we saw that the, the, the consensus model of mining, it, it's simply not scalable. It's an it's, it's ecological tragedy. So you're trying <laughs> to buy a car, you and I are trying to buy yeah. and sell a car, but we have to have approval of the whole village. And that's the well, kind some, of concept. Some transactions see, you do that. <laughs> and you see indeed that the, 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 the technologies uh, that do aim for what we call enterprise blockchain, one of the things that they do is look very carefully at the consensus mechanism. And there again, you see that because there are still trust in a number of centralized institutions, all of a sudden, you don't need to have that mining. You can say, yes, we mutually trust this one, or we mutually trust all yeah. these five, uh, which makes an optimization compared to the, to the original one. So as we move out of the labs and the proof of concepts, one of the first questions you've got to ask yourself is, which DLT do I want to use? Yes, yes. Indeed. Um, it's not easy. No. Um, I tell you why. Because you need to learn a lot about, mm -hmm. uh, about uh, distributed ledger technology. And I think the, the three core elements are, first one is consensus mechanism, mm -hmm. transparency. What is the visibility? I do every single node on the network can see all yeah. the transactions of the other nodes. Not so good in banking. No. <laughs> and finally, not um, um, indeed, but you still would not want to have visibility of, mm -hmm. of everything. You, as a regulator, you might, because you'll be party to all of those transactions, potentially. Uh, and finally, is this enterprise level DLT? An enterprise level starts from anything that you really should be talking 20,000 transactions per second. And that is still very, very wobbly enterprise performance that we should look at almost aim at 100,000 uh, transactions per, per second. So these are the three key elements. So when you understand what consensus you want to operate, for example, if you're only happy with consensus between the parties who are party to the transaction, tick, because that's how banking operates in trade as well. Uh, if you then think, well, I am really liking this uh, DLT, but I only want to see transactions I'm party to. And likewise, I don't want anybody else to see all of my transactions. That matters too. And finally, is that performance. Okay. Otherwise, you can't make it. You can't deploy it. You can't use it for the, for the real life, really. Yeah. So, but in terms of what, what are the, the, I mean, there are, it seems to me that you're bringing a lot of this back to existing um, uh, problems and use cases. How can blockchain DLT be fitted into that? But then there's, a, there's areas where you know, we talk about standards, we're talking about, what about regulatory? We're talking about how the regulators playing with this? They actually love it. Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I must say, if you think about certain of those uh, DLTs, and I, I, I will use Corda here as example, Corda R3, you had involvement of several central banks around the world to test the enterprise performance of that network. Mm -hmm. um, they do like it. Uh, they definitely consider that, and they are involved heavily with various trials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for intra-bank settlements, for settlement between <coughs> banks and the central banks. So I was actually very positively surprised with the huge level of support mm -hmm. the regulators are pushing behind, putting behind mm -hmm. this technology. So I think that definitely is, is something that uh, will drive adoption even further. Yeah, it's interesting yeah. because all the central banks seem to have gone against it for um, proper set mm -hmm. settlement and central bank. It depends. Bank of England I seems think. To have. I think. No, there are people in Bank of England that are absolutely on board with it. I can mm. tell you that I'm part of those working yeah, groups all as well. They're wrestling about that. Mm. I don't think they are less arresting. As I say, this is still education mm. between a settlement that you currently use using API 
and same settlement, just using different type of technology. Mm. And I think that's different. There are still some echoes of this mm. crypto asset or new yes. crypto asset being created. And, and that's dangerous talk because, mm. again, we should be really thriving to educate people that that's not, that's yeah. not the case. Yeah. Um, so what institution was she with again? Cause yeah, she's, yeah. Uh, I feel like she was really, uh, beating around the bush and like, didn't want to say Nat West, right? Yeah. I'm convinced Nat West is probably already on board with Ripple in, in one way or another, because especially towards the end, especially towards the end, uh, you know, mentioning Bank of England and they're very on board with this. And again, Bank of England, they're a paying client ripple. And then towards the end, they started saying like, hey, there's like, you know, crypto assets on these blockchains that you can use. Like, okay. Okay, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I, I must say, I'm very, very satisfied with this. That was awesome. That was awesome. Uh, Edward as Rever. Paid Alex not paying. All right. 